Joining me today is David Juve, who is a senior vice president in New Hampshire Business and Industry Association. Um, uh, so David, a workforce development. Um, we were talking about in-migration and people right, in there. Right. And, and I, I want to kind of continue sort of the policies that might attract that, or I maybe mean, not any policies, what are the, the conditions? But I also want to touch on this other notion of workforce development that, um, that it, it, sort of non-traditional workforce. Um, you mentioned we were all getting grayer, and I, I noticed when I shaved this morning <laughs> that, holy mackerel, there was one more added to the list. Um, we are getting grayer, so is is there sort of, does, do the BIA and, your, and the companies that you work with represent think about how do they work with older workers? Well, they, and, 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 and so the other group would be, um, you know, immig immigrants uh, from outside the United States, sort of, when we think migration patterns, it's from Mass to New Hampshire, mm -hmm. or Connecticut mm -hmm. to New Hampshire, but from um, Europe or China or, or uh, Asia to New Hampshire. Right. Um, companies think about it all the time. Uh, clearly, right now, workforce and our, the ability of companies to, to both acquire a workforce and have them properly educated and properly trained is by far the number one uh, business concern in New Hampshire. Uh, there's a couple of opportunities though, maybe what I would call a good news part of this story is that um, for people uh, age 50 and above or 60 and above that in the past may have been thinking about retirement, many, many people want to stay in the workforce uh, and they're extraordinarily valuable employees, they have a great work ethic, uh, they've got uh, all kinds of experience and, and uh, stick to if that's a phrase. Yeah, grittiness. Uh, <laughs> grittiness, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and they provide uh, uh, great examples to, to the younger next generation workforce uh, about how to really do your job. So that's a good opportunity uh, for a lot of employers and their organizations like the AARP, for example, that, that really one of their primary uh, uh, functions now relating to workforce is, is making sure employers know about this resource that, that is available in the state right now. A second, I think, untapped resource is uh, our immigrant population. And these, these are people that are either immigrating to New Hampshire from other parts of the country because they want to live in New Hampshire or live in the United States, or in some cases, refugees from other uh, places in the world where countries are in turmoil and they're working through refugee organizations and, and uh, ending up in, in New Hampshire in uh, what we call welcoming cities. And, and, and that's partly because our unemployment rate's so low. Um, that, they, that New Hampshire gets sort of chosen too, is that correct? It's, it's, well, it's, it's really a function of a lot of things. Okay. In, in, in part well, of let's the, not distract us. Part let's... of the function is New Hampshire letting, letting uh, refugee organizations know that we're a welcoming state and okay. we have welcoming cities. And most importantly, there are, are local organizations set up to help transition the refugee population into uh, living, working members of, of New Hampshire society. And, and are our businesses uh, supportive of this? They are, but I think it's in its infancy because um, we should be honest, there are challenges relating to uh, immigrant and refugee populations. Uh, primarily, uh, their English may be uh, insufficient or, or non-existent, so there are language barriers that, that need to be overcome. There are oftentimes uh, transportation uh, uh, barriers that need to be overcome. There are oftentimes cultural uh, and uh, you know work culture and and uh, just societal cultural differences that need to be overcome. But if you focus on those, there are there are answers to all of those obstacles. And what employers are finding is these people that are coming to New Hampshire from around the world for whatever reason, are extraordinarily good workers. They're very dedicated, they're very appreciative of, of their employment opportunities, and, um, and so there are a lot of, I guess what I would call individual success stories. I mentioned uh, welcoming cities, there are Nashua, Concord, Manchester, and Laconia that, that have specifically uh, set up uh, immigrant and refugee related organizations mm -hmm. to help make that transition. Um, and employers, wise employers who, who have job openings that they can't fill are already beginning to interact with those organizations. So I think that's a, a tremendous opportunity. Um, so the, 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 the labor force, 
will, will we meet the needs in the next 10 years, do you think? Well, that's an excellent question. Uh, there's an initiative in New Hampshire called 65 by 25, a study out of Georgetown University looked at all of the states and tried to uh, map out what their workforce needs would be by 2025. And the conclusion of their study was that New Hampshire, in order to be operating, our economy to be operating at peak efficiency, needed to have 65% of our population with either a four-year college degree, two-year degree, or some type of special uh, certification uh, for the trades. So right, I gotta cut you off right there, but we're gonna come back to that. So please stay with us. 